the risk of being redundant, let's talk about $500 my ass and why you ruin classic. And pardon me for a second while I go robot arms. So what does this mean? Well, it's really simple. It just refers to the fact that the internet is populated by people in their bathrobes who have never left their basement, who have these pictures in their heads of what is historically important and mechanically restorable, what do these things cost, and why should a classic be ruined, and what is a $500 car? And you know what? Because they never leave the basement, they have no idea what they're talking about. Case in point, Ran Wen Park Racing's 1974 Chevy El Camino SS. Now, as anybody who lives in a semi-rural area knows, there are old cars rotting in the dirt all over the place. This was one of them. Sometimes people are hanging on to them because they're sentimental. Sometimes people are hanging on to them because the people themselves are dysfunctional. Sometimes they're hanging on to them because what it would bring on Bring a Trailer and what it looks like now under their tree requiring a Caterpillar D9 tractor to extricate it and a functional human being to write a review and post an ad is just too big a gap for that transaction to ever happen. That description is oddly apt when you're talking about this Ranwin parked Chevy El Camino. Uh, when Tim and Corey from the team found this car in the California Central Valley, good place to look, by the way, it had severe rust issues, most notably in the roof, it had no motor, and it hadn't moved in decades. Now, the owner of this car, seeing a couple guys with the money and means to make just the entire thing disappear from his life, he made the quick assessment that that moment may never present itself ever again in his lifetime, struck a deal on the spot for well under Lemon's money. Team Captain Corey's original concept is he was just gonna put some Junkyard 350 in this thing and make it a parts runner because unlike every other American in the Central Valley, Corey does not think that climbing out of an 11 foot F350 every time you gotta go to O'Reilly's for spark plugs is a good idea. Now to be clear, this might still become a street car, but Corey said, you know, shouldn't I see what it can do in a lemons race first? Well, uh, okay. To address the rust, the team found a bunch of replacement panels from a same generation Elko in an Oakland junkyard. Now, that's another example of why these sort of Malaysia era El Caminos are really not that valuable. They got an entire roof from the junkyard, welded that in. The engine is some low compression motorhome 454. 454, no shit. That fellow Lemons racer Chris Overzet had sitting in his shop gave it to Corey and Tim for free. See, it helps to make friends at a Lemons race. That was attached to a TH400 because you, know, you can find those um, like holding up trees in the Central Valley. It has some old Oldsmobile Omega suspension parts from some of their previous race projects. And there's a 273 rear axle. They got that online and it promptly exploded. Wheels and tires, as you know, those are exempt from the Lemons budget. So they're actually nice. These are 18 by nine and a half torque thrust style wheels. It's got Corvette Z06 brakes in the front. All of that works really well. You know, this big block full size Elko weighs less than like a BMW X3, so it all works. That little exploding axle issue didn't help with the overall results at Thunder Hill, but the lap times show that the Elko was competitive with other Class C cars. Which is to say, pretty slow. So if you're one of those internet trolls in your bathrobe, in your basement, who is horrified that this valuable, historically important automobile was ruined in a lemons race, let me just tell you, there are a lot of great investment opportunities out there and I would love to introduce you to them. So please send me your money and I will hook you up.